everyone and welcome to Action RPG Build Guide Edition. Today I'm ready to drop on you something new, something fresh, something I've literally been working on all day. This is my new Infernal Whip Warlock. Doesn't that sound nice saying it? As of right now, at time of recording, I have pushed this to 350 corruption. And for this build, we set out with a simple goal as a community. We are going to use the Spine Sword that has now been fixed in the patch. We are going to use Flame Whip and we are going to synergize this around Warlock and Fire and come up with the best build we can. And again, we are pushing 350 corruption and it's feeling pretty good. We're actually very happy with the results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the skills. I'm going to take you through the passives, the gear, the idols and the blessings so you can make your own infernal warlock whip build. And at the end of the video, I will give you some gameplay so you can see this in action. And when you're watching the gameplay, the order of skills is important. What you want to do is you want to cast your Profane Veil. Then you want to make two Chthonic Fissures, and then you want to spam Bone Curse. And you'll see this. It sounds like a lot of clicking. It's really, really not. It's got a really good motion to it. All right, let's start off with the skills. And the first skill you will see here is Infernal Shade. And when you see these numbers at the top, just know that this is very, very easy to accomplish because if you have a good rolled spine sword, it's going to give you nine to skills. Nine. Okay, starting with Infernal Shade. Now on here, you're literally taking half of the tree up. So you can kind of pick which way you want to go. What I recommend is you want to come down here and actually take Infernal Shades in its combust state, which means they explode when they finish. So basically you're going to be doing tons of AOE damage to enemies around the target. Then you want to come over here and you want to get Hellfire where your Infernal Shades stay on the ground. They don't actually attach to targets anymore. What's great about this node is that means you can start stacking Infernal Shades on top of each other so multiple can hit the same target. You then want to swoop around here and you want as much area as humanly possible. So they're big, that way they're obviously hitting as many targets as possible. And then you want to go into Blaze Shade. Now the last point that I had was kind of a leftover right here. I just put it in Ignite Chance, okay? And if for any reason you don't have as many points, you can kind of snag a few out of here just to make sure you still get Blaze Shade. Okay. Moving over to Summon Volatile Zombie. Now you are never going to be casting zombies yourself. Unless, of course, you get the experimental affix on your belt, where then you can manually cast them through your potions. But you're going to be casting these through Chthonic Fisher. And what your zombie is going to be doing for you is they are going to be stunning enemies. They are your kill threshold. They're going to give you a little bit of life. And they're going to be proccing Infernal Shades on all the enemies. And again, you have more points than you need in this build. So basically, I just took that they run and move very, very fast. But ultimately, you have five points to play with, and you could put them wherever you want. Moving over to Chthonic Fisher. Now, when you are using the Spine Sword, you can no longer make Put Torment on enemies. So there is limited options inside of this build. Now, what you want to do first is you actually want to come to the right, and you want to grab Acid Skin. Now, Flame Whips will not put Torment on enemies, but what they will do is they will put Acid Skin. So all enemies are going to have that curse on them, and they're going to have 20% more critical strike chance when you hit them, which is great. You then want to come down here and get zombies. Obviously, you're not manually casting them because they're going to come out of your Chthonic Fissures for you and be putting Infernal Shade on the enemies. And then you can kind of bounce around. We took Ignite Global. We came over here and took Mana Cost. We took Multiplicative Damage here, and we took Spirit Frequency which another way of saying that is Flame Whip Frequency. Moving over to Bone Curse. And this is going to feel very, this is going to feel very foreign because Bone Curse is normally auto cast by a bunch of different skills. In this build, this is your spam ability. All right. And it's going to make sense when you watch the gameplay. This is your spam ability. And pretty simple. You're going to be putting Mark of Death on enemies. You're going to be shredding armor. You're going to be protecting yourself. You're going to be putting slow on targets. You're taking mana efficiency and you're chilling targets. 
but obviously you're not really doing any damage with this skill. Now, the reason why you want to spam Bone Curse is because of Profane Veil. And Profane Veil has this node right here, which is Stream of Profanity, which means you can basically fully reduce the cost or the time for your Profane Veil. So you make Profane Veil, you use Chthonic Fissure and Chthonic Fissure because you can make two of them, which is going to reduce the time of your cooldown for Profane Veil. Then you're going to use Bone Curse, which is going to further reduce Profane Veil so you can use it over and over again. You are going to love messing around with this skill. It is so, so nice. What you want to do is you want to first grab Stream of Profanity. Then you want to come up and turn this into a fire skill and grab all these nodes. This is the main skill Infernal, which is going to put Infernal Shade on the targets. You then want to come over and get some Bone Curse proc. Even though you're already spamming it, it's nice to just have it work as well when you start and end Profane Veil. You want to use Cleanse, you want longer duration and movement speed, you want armor applied as dot, and you want to inflict penance on the target. As you can see right now, we have 30 points into Profane Veil, and if you don't have 30 points, you can actually take out these three. And now you're sitting at 27. Okay? Build works really well. Moving over to the passives. In the base tree, this is the same as our Wheel of Torment. We are going Intelligence, we're going Vitality, and then we are going Necrotic Resistance and Ward Retention. In our Warlock tree, we're going Chaos Flames, we're going Soul Stealer. This is a mana-hungry build. We're taking Mind, we're taking our Damage Reduction and Withering. We are specced into Necrotic Resistance, so you still want Imperishable. You want as much Leech as you can get your hands onto. We are no longer going into Damn Chance because this is a fire build, but you do want Ignite Chance with the Ignite Overload. We are still going into Witch Fire for added damage. We are going into Body for Intelligence and Vitality. You're taking double damage with Crit Multiplier. You want Haste so you can move around the map fast. I really like Fleeting Crone. You're going to love it when you come out of Profane Veil and you're just flying through the map. And then we're taking nothing on the end here. I tested Aspect of Death, but it made us too squishy. Points felt wasted in Seer. And Anguish, it's nice to have another curse, but here, this is for necrotic damage, and again, we are specced into fire. Final eight points are over in Lich, and this is gonna give you base health, and it's gonna give you more Leech, again, to give you more survivability and sustain. Those are the passives. Moving over to the Blessings. Everything survivability, void resistance, lightning resistance, crit avoidance, physical resistance, and endurance. Now, if you have endurance already at 60%, on this node, you can get fire damage, and you can also get fire shred. So this blessing, you have lots of options. I just, of course, I'm gonna go survivability first, but just know you can go fire shred or fire damage for this blessing. Looking at gear, I'm currently using three uniques. We're using the Bone Clamor Helmet, which is going to give you ward for your uncapped necrotic resistance. We are using an Ambitions of the Erased for Acolyte. This can give you as many as five points to Infernal, Infernal Shade. And right now I only took Infernal Shade at tier six, so you could technically get even more points. And then, of course, this build is built around the Spine Sword that has been recently fixed at time of recording today in patch 1.0.3 from EHG, where now Flame Whip is working accordingly. Now, I want to be clear, when you're playing this build, Flame Whip still feels very undertuned. It does have a purpose. It is applying Acid Skin. It is applying Dots. It is hurting enemies but the big bulk of your damage is coming from Infernal Shade. So this build is focused around the Spine Sword and focused around Flame Whip, and I truly believe that Flame Whip is going to get another buff or two when it's in its final form, which is going to make this build even better. But know that Flame Whip is not going to be your main damage, but you do need the Spine Sword. Okay, let's go through each item one at a time. Amulet, Fire Fire. Armor, Vitality, Intelligence, Life, Life. And you want to try and get this. Maximum health gained is Endurance Threshold in the Implicit. Belt, New Spider Silk for Resistances. 
And on my belt and rings, I took mana, re mana regen. Ring, intelligence, mana regen. Ring, intelligence, mana regen. And I put both of these bases. You want cooldown recovery and you want necrotic resistance. So I put them both there to show off some balance and just know that those are the both rings. You can have two of these, two of these, one of each. Boots. For boots, a little different. I took tier six increased cooldown recovery. And for gloves, again, I took the implicit cooldown recovery and I took increased area and hybrid health. You want your infernal shades to be as big as possible. Moving over to the idols. Very easy. Life, 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 life. And then we have a Thrones of Ambition to boost your armor and boost your fire. Now, when you're looking at this build, I want to be as clear as possible. There's, there's one tier six affix for each item. The rest are all tier five. Very easy, in my opinion, to build uh, when it comes to gear. The way this is set up, the way this is set up, we have maxed endurance, 1300 endurance threshold, 100 crit avoidance, 5000 life, and maxed resistances, including you'll probably be sitting anywhere from 1 to 2000 ward sitting. If you can build this, guaranteed 350 corruption using flame whip, and you will be very tanky. That's the build. You saw the skills, you saw the passives, you saw the gear, idols, and blessings. If you have any questions, leave them in the description. Again, I'm gonna show you two full runs of gameplay so you kind of get an idea of how this build plays. Two asks at the end of the video, ask number one, I'm hoping today is the day I have earned your subscription. I'm hoping today is the day you make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it, but of course, only if you think I've earned it. If I haven't earned it, I will work harder for you. Ask number two, check out my Patreon. Thank you to the first 131 people that have signed up. I get asked all the time, what's the best way to support? Patreon is it. We're going to have movie night. We have monthly game night. You get access to the VIP lounge. You get access to all the exclusive content, especially the stuff that's coming up on my vacation. And as you can see, the timer is still going at time of recording. The subathon is at day 21. If you want to come by and say hi or ask any questions, first link in the description. I'm done. Hopefully you were entertained or at least learned something. Aaron, out.
Oh, <laughs> 